so ACDC, the classic, classic rock band, they have a new album out in a couple of weeks. It's called Rock or Bust. So to celebrate the return of the kings of classic rock music, I thought I'd do something a bit ambitious. And also to celebrate 1,000 subscribers, and very much thank you to everyone who's subbed to my channel. That is really much appreciated. So there's a combination of those, and particularly as it's approaching my three-year anniversary, so everything colliding at once, I thought I would cover ACDC's entire discography in two weeks. All 14 albums, one pair day. Definitely the most ambitious thing I've tried on this channel. And that's why uploads have been very slow throughout November, because I've been working on this so that it will be up one pair day and on time. So today we're going to start with High Voltage by ACDC. Released in 1976 in America and the UK, this was their debut album, well, their international debut. It came out in Australia early. In fact, they'd had two releases by this time, High Voltage and TNT. And, but this was really the first time most of the world ever became aware of the band. Though I can't say this album's one of my absolute favourites from their career, or one of my favourites from the Bon Scott era. I find it to be a promising start to a classic career, but this album, I think, what well, does contain some classics, it's a bit of a mixed bag overall. Now, just to clarify, I'm not going to be going track by track through every ACDC album. Instead, I'm just going to be talking more generally about what I like about them, what I don't, and where I put it among their discography. But first, I definitely really want to talk about It's a Long Way to the Top if you want to rock and roll because my thoughts on this song will make every ACDC fan cry, um, hate me, since I don't like it. I just... I, re I really don't like it. In fact, it's one of the worst songs on the album, in my opinion. Um, I know it's Bon Scott's signature song, and I know it's considered a classic, but... Okay, yeah, it has a good chorus. Killer riff from Angus, so what do I hate? The bagpipes. The, the bagpipes, hand, hands down. They're just, I mean, this is very subjective, but they're just one of my least favorite instruments. Uh, they're an instrument that I see no use, no purpose, or redeeming quality in. Um, it's an instrument that makes my stomach turn and my ears retch. So the fact that they're all over this song, to me, just destroys what could have been a classic. I rarely, rarely listen to this song because of the bagpipes. And if I do, I certainly skip the bloody outro or the, oh, just, the bagpipes. And I don't think they're even real bagpipes. I think they're synthesised bagpipes or something. Um, I, I don't really know fully, but oh, they're just so annoying, so unforgivable. So now we've got that out of the way. So yes, before you ACDC fans decide to issue a fat war against me and force me to hide in like Sam Rushdie, let me tell you what I did enjoy about the album. I mean, this album does have some absolutely stomping classic ACDC, such as the second track, yeah, rock and roll singer. It's catchy as anything the band's ever put out. Awesome guitar solo, nice vocal performance from Bon. He really delivers on all fronts. I mean, then you have TNT, even with its slightly annoying Yobbits chant of oi, oi, oi which are kind of unnecessary, they are. It's probably my personal favourite riff on the album um, from the Young Brothers. And the addictive simplicity of that chorus, it's, it's, just, it's just great. TNT. Awesome, awesome song. I particularly like the live versions when they really go all out for it and make it a heavier song. And you have stuff like the final track, High Voltage, which is probably the best thing on here. To me, this is really the song that on this album the most really sets the blueprint for the commercially successful rock that the band would end up producing on later albums. And this track wouldn't really have felt too out of place on like Powerage or Highway to Hell or some of the more commercially successful albums of the Bon Scott era. And yeah, I do as a whole on this album like the sort of slower, bluesier nature of the tracks. I mean, they often have a sort of a, a pop rock, maybe, sort of barroom blues type feel to them. It's definitely a far bluesier sound than we definitely get with the uh, most commercially successful period of the band. And definitely these first couple of albums, you can really see that blues influence. And one of the most prominent examples of that has to be Can I Sit Next to You, Girl? Um, though I do as a whole think that the guitar work is definitely probably the weakest on an ACDC album. That might um, be controversial, but I do think that it definitely improves on subsequent albums. I think there's slightly less distinct riffs on here. They're a bit less interesting than later releases. 
And the solos are hardly awe-inspiring. I mean, they're good. I mean, Angus was only young when this album was recorded, so fair enough. I'm not really, you know, shitting on Angus here. I think he's a great guitarist. But I definitely find that the solos become far more interesting and the riffs become um, better and more distinct as time goes on. But we do also need to talk about the absolute filler in Tosh on the album, like the Jack. Apparently the live version's better and has become a bit of a staple, or certainly had been a staple. Um, I don't... well, I can't even have an edit, so I, I can't say I, I really know why, because in the studio this is a, a rather dismal, sluggish blues song with a generic 12-bar blues rhythm to it and Bond shouting, She's got the jack. Ugh, it's just... nah. He shouts that far too many times. It's dull, rather repetitive, and feels overly long, um, definitely. And then you've also got the pretty bad She's Got Balls. Now this actually has a pretty nice riff to it, it's just the lyrics. I mean, even for ACDC, they are, they are quite pure. I mean, I, I don't expect much from ACDC lyrically, I, I really don't. And I, I often love the cheesiness and the euphemisms that they use because they are utterly hilarious often. But a chorus of She's Got Balls, come on. And you know what? I could cope, maybe. And maybe I could cope if the chorus wasn't sung in a way by Bond where he's like, She's Got Balls. I mean, I can't do it because I'm not Bond Scott, but if you know the song, like the end of the chorus, the last line of She's Got Balls, he sings. The way he sings that is so annoying. I mean, I do admit, again, controversially, that I do prefer Brian Johnson over Bond any day of the week as a vocalist. Um, I know, everyone will stop watching this video by now after saying I don't like a long way to the top and that I prefer Brian to Bond, but that, that song just does nothing for me. But before, before we conclude, because the chorus of ACDC's lyrics and because I want to celebrate how utterly fantastic some of the lyrics are, I thought that from each album I would pick my favourite cheesy, cheesy ass line and uh, j just tell you what it is. So the what high voltage I've picked. It's taken from the rather sleazy Little Lover. And in fact, I'm going to take two lines from this song because it's just lyrically just like It's Alright, Marmony Bleeding by Dylan. It's, it's such a profound song. So, firstly, we have Killed Me When I Saw the Wet Patch on Your Seat. Was it Coca Cola? Oh, Bon. And then we also have You Had My Picture on Your Bedroom Wall Next to Gary Glitter. <laughs> Oh, it's just looking back, and uh, it's one of those lyrics that looking back because of who we know Gary Glitter to be now, it's great. Even though Gary Glitter's Christmas song is still just fantastic after all he's done. Still, as much as I criticise certain aspects of this album, it's still a fun one to throw on occasionally. It's definitely not one of the band's best, in my opinion. Not an album I often find myself going back to in ACDC's discography, but it's far, far, far from their worst as well. A 7 out of 10. It's a promising, very bluesy, almost boogie, rock and roll style record. It sets the scene for their career and definitely foreshadows the great almighty band ACDC will become. There's glimmers of brilliance here, but I don't think this is the real McCoy or the finished article. This has been the album, and thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow for my review of Dirty Deeds Done Cheap, the second release chronologically, because I know it was actually recorded, well, it was released, sorry, in 1981 at Black and Black, but we're, we're going to cover it next because, yeah. So this has been the album, and thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and as usual, long live rock and roll.